Hello everyone and welcome back to another card game tutorial video. In this video I will go over collision mask correcting in Game Maker Studio. If you enjoy this series and want to see more be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to download these files and support the series be sure to check out my Patreon linked in the description below. In our game our card sprites defaulted to have a rectangular collision mask. You can see this in the Collision Mask drop-down menu of the sprite. When this is the case and we rotate the image angle, the Collision Mask remains a rectangle instead of a rhombus. The difference being that the rectangle has four 90 degree angles while a rhombus would have angles that would form a rotated rectangle. Let me show you what that looks like. So if we were to keep the collision mask type to be a rectangle and we rotate the card sprite, the collision mask will then turn into a larger rectangle. And it would be as wide as the card is from its leftmost point to its rightmost point and tall enough to be its topmost point and its bottommost point. So you'll see, even when I'm outside of the card sprite, I will draw this color here. And all this is, is just a left down event that draws a circle anytime I'm inside the collision mask. And as you can see, when I'm in the card behind it, it's still drawing red. Now if I move over a little bit, it will do it for the card behind it but we only want it to be within the card sprite. So by the end of this video, if we were to do the same thing, it would look like this. As you can see, it's red when I'm within the card, but as soon as I move outside of the card, it changes to the color of the next card. Now, there are two ways we can do this. The first and easiest is changing the collision mask from rectangle to precise. Precise will ignore all the transparent pixels of the sprite. The hard way, which we are forced to use, is to have a script that mathematically calculates the area of the sprite. The reason why we are forced to do this is because the cards overlap each other. And if you recall, when we select a card, in order to select one card, we want to make sure that the mouse button is within the card area of the topmost card. So when we do a left down event and the mouse cursor is within multiple objects collision masks, we want to be sure we are able to differentiate them from each other. The math we will use falls under integration. We will be using the area underneath or above four lines to determine the new collision mask. If our mouse button is within those four lines, we have collided with the sprite. The first thing we'll need to do is to initialize four lines to zero in our card object create event. Then in the draw event, in order to determine the four lines we need, we need to calculate a few things. First, we need the distance between the center of the card and the corner of the card. We will initialize this as a local variable called midslope, and the equation we will use is the Pythagorean's theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Or in this case, c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So midslope is equal to the square root of the card width divided by 2 squared plus the card height divided by 2 squared. Then we need the angle that the midslope makes. 
we will call this local variable mid-slope angle. This equation will be mid-slope angle is equal to the arc sine of the opposite leg over the hypotenuse, which will be the arc sine of the card height divided by 2 divided by the mid-slope. And to make better sense of that, when we got the distance between the center of the card and the corner of the card, that would be the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So when we do the arc sine of the card height divided by 2, which would be the opposite leg of that right angle triangle, and divide that by the mid slope, that will give us the angle we are looking for. Now we need to calculate the coordinates of each corner of the card. This will follow the format x is equal to the cosine of the angle multiplied by the slope. And y is equal to the sine of the angle multiplied by the slope. However, these values will be offset by the angle and the x and y position of the card. So we will initialize these values as such. Now we can begin to determine the equations of the lines we need. The equation of a line is y is equal to the slope multiplied by x plus the y-intercept. x and y will be our mouse x and mouse y values. We need to calculate the slope and the y-intercepts of the lines. Since these cards are parallelograms, the slopes of the left and right lines will be the same and the slopes of the top and bottom lines will be the same. The equation of a slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So the slope of the left and right lines will be Given the slope, you can determine the y-intercepts by plugging in values for x and y and the equation y is equal to mx plus b. Since we can use the coordinates of each corner of the card, we can plug them into their respective line equations. So the y-intercept of the left line will be... And for the right line... And now we'll do the same for the top and bottom lines. So we have created everything we need for our lines. The only time our lines will not work is if the slope is infinity. This happens when the difference between two x positions we use to determine the slope is zero. This will only happen when the card is straight. So in this case, our lines will be line one will be equal to x minus the card width divided by 2. This will create the vertical line to the left. Line 2 will equal x plus the card width divided by 2, which will create the vertical line to the right. Line 3 will be the horizontal line at the top
and line 4 will be the horizontal line at the bottom. Now, any other time we'll use the lines we have prepared, which will look like this. Now, if you have any questions on why these lines are functions of y and these lines are functions of x, be sure to check out the Discord server linked in the description below. There you can contact me directly and we can discuss video topics easily. However, now we can use these four lines to correct our collision mask. In the left pressed event, in the script hand card select, we are going to select the card if the mouse x and mouse y variables are within the confinements of all the lines. So we're going to remove everything we've had before and we're going to add all new code and that's going to be with player. We want to return the highest card selected. So for i is equal to hand count minus 1 and i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus with hand card at i if mouse x is greater than line 1 and mouse x is less than line 2 and mouse y is greater than line 3 and mouse y is less than line 4 we know we are in the confinement of the card and we will return i. And then we'll want to return negative 1 as a default. However, we're going to add something new. If any card is already selected, we will return. So return card value that is already selected. for i is equal to hand count minus 1 and i is greater than or equal to 0 i minus minus if the hand card at i selected value is true we are going to return that i value so that's all we will need to do to correct our collision mask so if I hit the play button, and we start the game, it seems that we did not reference a variable correctly. As you can see, we put YTL, and that's in the card object at line 3 of the draw event, or line 32. So if we go there, at line 32, we want to put an underscore here and retest the game. So if I hit the continue button, and I select here, which would be Pokemon Trader, or let's click the double colorless right here, before we added all this code, it would still select the Pokemon Breeder card. So, as you can see, I selected the double colorless energy. 
Now, if you want to be able to see the collision mask by drawing it like this, so you can test it for yourself in your game, what you'll want to do is you'll want to create a left down mouse event. And what we're going to add here is if we're in the confinement of the card, we'll create a variable for our mouse X position and one for our mouse Y position. And then we're going to increment a variable for every X and Y value we've stored in this array. So what we want to do is we want to go to our create event and initialize this to be zero. And then in our draw event, what we want to do is add a condition here that will set each card to have a certain color depending on its hand position. So the first one will have blue, then the next one will be red, then green, and then it will start back at blue. Now, then we want to have a for loop that will draw every, that will draw a circle at every coordinate we've created. And then we want to set our color back to white. So I'm going to put this in its own region called for testing so that I know to remove it later. And then I'm going to put everything we've done in its own region as well. Just so we know what it is for. And I'm going to call this region collision mask correction. So now, if we retest it, and we select continue, oh, one thing I did forget to do is we don't want to be able to move the card. So for this test, we want to comment this out and then retest our code. And if you want to be able to test this without having to package your game each time and unzip it, just have an older version of the game that you can open so that you can easily open up another instance of the game. So if I hit continue and I select Blastoise, you can see that I'm drawing red because if you remember the order goes blue, red, green, blue, red. So as soon as I get out of Blastoise, when I get on top of Squirtle, it's going to draw blue, just like that. And as you can see, if I follow the edge of the card, it only draws these circles. It only draws these circles within the Blastoise card. And then the same for Squirtle. And then when I get to Poliwag, it'll turn green, then red, then blue again. So we can see that we have fixed our collision mask. So that's all I wanted to go over in this video. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to support this series and download these program files, be sure to check out my Patreon linked in the description below. And again, if you have any questions for understanding, be sure to join my Discord linked down below as well so we can talk it through. Until next time.